हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन यूनिवर्सिटी फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड थेरीज फॉर योर अपकमिंग यू जी सी नेट इन इकोनॉमिक्स बिफोर मूविंग टू थेरीज लेट एस डिस्कस अबाउट अवर क्रैश कोर्स इन दिस क्रैश कोर्स यू आर गोइंग टू गेट ट्वेंटी मॉक टेस्ट फॉर यूर पेपर टू इकोनॉमिक्स एंड यू विल गेट ऑल द सोल्यूशन पी डी एफ ऑफ ऑल द ट्वेंटी टेस्ट देन वी आर ऑल्सो प्रोवाइडिंग नोट्स ऑन ऑल द यूनिट्स हियर यू विल बी प्रिपेयर फॉर टू थाउजेंड प्लस एम सी क्यूज इन दिस क्रैश कोर्स and the fees is just 999 rupees if you want to join you can contact this number the number is displayed on the screen yes let us move to the international trade theories as you all know international trade means it is exchanging of goods and services and capital with the other countries it is known as the international trade yes uh, where we are going to exchange our produced goods and services with the other countries and which is known as the export and we are also going to buy the goods and services from the other country which is known as the import so let us move to the theories of international trade here the first theory related to international trade is uh, theory of mercantilism it is very oldest theory of uh, international trade and this theory was popularized by adam smith yes adam smith uh, in his book wealth of nations he was the father of economics yes let us uh, let us see what does mercantilism theory say yes this theory uh, this theory holds that countries should encourage exports and discourage import yes according to mercantilism theory the country is going to encourage the exports it want to sell more and it, it wants to import less so it is going to uh, discourage the import and the country should encourage exports and discourage imports by using taxes and subsidies yes here the country is going to export more and more goods for this the government should encourage by giving subsidies and the country has to import less and less goods and services for this the government is going to impose the taxes on imported goods so in this way yeah, in according to theory of mercantilism the government is going to increase the exports by imposing taxes and subsidies and here the medium of exchange was good at time at that time the people used to use gold as the medium of exchange to buy the goods or to sell the goods they used to use gold so please remember it and uh, if a nation has abundant gold then it is considered as wealthy nation yep, if the yes if the stock of the gold is more with the country then it is termed as wealthy nation and it is in according to the theory of mercantilism it is impossible to reach simultaneously because it is a one way trade all the countries are going to encourage exports only no countries wants to import so they because of this this uh, this theory, according to mercantilism both the countries are unable to reach simultaneously then this is also known as selfish trade because uh, mercantilism uh, in mercantilism theory they have in, uh, ignored the world trade they are giving importance only for the exports they did not give much importance for the imports so this theory is known as this selfish trade and it will ignore the world trade then mercantilism was called as a zero sum game because here only one country is going to get benefit so it is known as the zero sum game as only one country get benefited from it because all the countries are going to encourage exports only no country is going to encourage the import only one country that is only the country which is going to export the goods and services it is going to get benefit so this uh, there is known as the zero sum game please remember it a question may ar arise here yes uh, then let us move to the second theory of international trade that is theory of absolute cost advantage yes this theory was given by adam smith in the year of 1776 yes mercantilism theory and absolute theory both both were given by adam smith and according to absolute cost advantage theory adam smith says that trade would be beneficial for both the countries if country a exports the goods which can produce with lower cost than country b and country b uh, and b, uh, can import the goods which can be produced with lower cost than it is yes, it means that a country should export the goods yes which go which can be produced with very low cost and the country should import the good which can produce which can produce at high cost in domestically so that this is known as the 
theory of absolute cost advantage so here the country should import the good if the uh, production cost is more and if the, the country should export the good for the good which export cost is less so here if the two countries have absolute cost advantage in producing two different goods then each country can gain from trade yes here if the two countries are having absolute cost advantage in producing the different goods then the trade is beneficial here please remember the two countries are having absolute cost advantage in different goods here you can see uh, with this table here uh, country, uh, both two countries are there one is india and china uh, wheat and cloth they are producing two goods one is wheat another one is cloth and here output is taken as per unit of the labor and here in india one unit of labor can produce 20 20 units of wheat and in china one unit of labor can produce eight units of wheat in india one unit of labor can produce six units of uh, cloth and 40 in china one unit of labor can produce 14 units of cloth it means that yes if you observe this table you will come to know that uh, india is having absolute cost advantage in the production of wheat because one unit of labor can produce 20 units of wheat here so india can produce uh, wheat india is having absolute cost advantage in the production of wheat in the same way uh, china is having absolute advantage in the production of cloth because one unit of uh, labor can produce 14 units of wheat sorry 14 units of cloth in china in india it is 8 units so uh, india is having uh, absolute cost advantage in the production of wheat and uh, china is having the absolute cost advantage in the production of cloth so both if they india will produce wheat and china will produce cloth and if if they exchange the goods with the goods among themselves then the trade is beneficial yes this you can observe in this diagram also actually diagramination explanation is not much necessary for this here india will produce wheat because it is having more absolute cost advantage in the production of wheat and the country b that is a uh, cloth uh, china is going to produce cloth because it is having more advantage in the production of uh, cloth so this is about uh, absolute cost advantage theory then the next theory is theory of comparative cost advantage yes this theory is given by david ricardo yes upon what uh, adam smith has said that uh, if the the trade is beneficial if both the countries are having absolute cost advantage in different types of goods yes for example if india is having uh, absolute cost advantage in the production of wheat and china is having in the uh, absolute cost advantage in the production of cloth then the trade is beneficial and uh, let us see what david ricardo is going to explain in in his uh, comparative cost advantage if one country has absolute disadvantage in the production of both the goods then also trade is beneficial yes adam smith did not explain this yes what adam smith has explained one country is having uh, absolute cost advantage in only one type of good but but what will happen if one country is having absolute advantage in both the goods and another country is having absolute ad, absolute disadvantage in both the goods then also trade is beneficial according to david ricardo yes i hope it is clear david ricardo is going to tell that if both the country if one country is is having absolute advantage in the production of both the goods and another country is having absolute disadvantage in the production of both the goods then also trade is beneficial this is explained in comparative cost advantage so here trade can be beneficial for two countries if one country has absolute advantage in all the products and the other country has no absolute advantage in any of the products even though the the, the countries can enter into trade they can get benefit let us see how yes here you can see according to ricardo a nation gains from the trade by exporting the goods 
और सर्विसेज इन विच इट हैज ग्रेटेस्ट कंपेरेटिव एडवांटेज इन प्रोडक्टिविटी एंड इंपोर्टिंग दोज गुड्स इन विच इट हैज लीस्ट कंपेरेटिव एडवांटेज हियर द डेविड डेविड रिकॉर्ड इज गोइंग टू कंसीडर कंपेरेटिव कॉस्ट एडवांटेज यस एडम स्मिथ कंसीडर एब्जोल्यूट एब्जोल्यूट एडवांटेज डेविड रिकॉर्ड इज गोइंग टू कंसीडर कंपेरेटिव एडवांटेज यस लेट अस try to understand this with this example here country uh, two countries are there one is portugal another one is england then they are going to pro, uh, produce wine and cloth yes here amount of labor per hour required to produce one unit yes here if you just observe this table you will come to know what do you mean by comparative advantage yes here portugal is going to uh, portugal in portugal one unit of labor can produce sorry to produce one unit of wine 80 hours of labor force is required and in the in the in england to produce one unit of wine 80 hours of manpower is required in the same way in portugal to produce one unit of cloth 90 hours of labor force is required in england to produce one unit of cloth 100 hours of labor force is required it means that the portugal is having absolute advantage in both the goods and uh, england is having absolute disadvantage in both the goods even the trade is beneficial how means here we are going to consider the comparative advantage see for example here, here according to this table the port in portugal to produce one unit of wine they need only 80 hours of manpower so the portugal can produce wine here is yes, because it is less compared to the workforce of in england so in the same way england yes in Eng england can pro england in england if england wants to produce wine it has to use 120 hours of manpower to produce one unit of wine so instead of that to produce cloth they need only 100 hours of manpower to produce one unit of cloth so in in the production of cloth the england is having comparative advantage more advantage is having in the production of cloth so it is having less advantage in the production of wine so the england is england is going to produce cloth in the same way portugal is having more advantage in the production of wine than in the production of cloth so portugal is going to produce uh, wine and england is going to produce uh, cloth so both will be benefited by doing trade so this is about uh, comparative cost advantage so by mistakenly here i have written absolute make it comparative cost advantage so this here you can observe with this uh, diagram also is yes, for your net examination there is no much explanation is needed but with this uh, diagram just understand this much enough so there are some assumption of comparative advantage theory uh, first one is 2 into 2 into 1 model yes, there are two countries two commodities and one factor of production that is labor and the perfect competition prevails in the market then labor is homogeneous factor please remember here the labor is hom homo labor is homogeneous factor then labor is mobile within the country but immobile outside the country is it means that labor can move from one place to another place in country but uh, but the immobile means they can't move to another country so constant returns to scale is going to apply in the production process these are about uh, this is about these are the assumptions of comparative cost advantage